everyone and welcome back. I'm Thank you so much for joining me. For the next few lessons, I'm going to show you all about how to use watercolors. We're going to start off basic and then we're going to get a little bit more technical and when you're done, you're going to be able to create beautiful artworks just like these ones. Watercolors are so fun to use, but they have a mind of their own. So I'm going to give you a few tips how to control the watercolor and how to create artworks you're really proud of. The final product might look a little bit like this. So we're going to turn the simple shapes into beautiful watercolour artworks and then add some details with a sharpie afterwards to turn it into an image. Come with me and I'll show you how. Today's lesson is all about watercolours. So that is the main material that you're going to need for this task. It does not matter about the quality of the watercolours that you have. It's all about how you use them. So whatever you have at home is fine. You'll also need some different size brushes and some paper to paint on. I use watercolour paper because it's a lot thicker, which is fantastic, but if you just have normal paper at home, that's fine too. I have offered a link for some materials that I like to use in the description below if you'd like to follow those to get your own. Before I show you what to do with this task, I wanted to show you a few things about what not to do. Sorry. Firstly, when you're drawing your outer shape, I'm going to start with a triangle today and you might notice that I've drawn it quite hard. I've pressed really hard with my pencil here. That is the first mistake because once we paint over it, we can't rub out the pencil and because watercolors are generally quite light and transparent, you'll always see this pencil mark coming through. So it's very important when drawing to really sketch quite a light line if you're needing to do that first rather than push really hard with your pencil. Now I'm wanting to paint this with watercolour. Obviously you need water and I could easily just paint it like this. The first thing to look out for is when you get really dry kind of marks like this. That simply means that you need more water. You need to keep dipping the water for the paints to work nicely. There, so this is my finished artwork. There's nothing too wrong with my artwork. However, I haven't used watercolors in the best possible way. I haven't used the water to help with creating the art. That's made my artwork quite flat and I wanted to show you this so I, you can compare the difference when I show you how to use the water properly. So I'll leave that to the side and I'm gonna do the good copy now. I've just cut a piece of A4 paper in half that creates an A5 piece of paper. And again, I'm working with the triangle shape. But remember what we learned last time is that I just need to lightly sketch it. You might not even really be able to see it on the screen there but I can see it for my reference. I'm taking up most of my paper here. There, there's my triangle shape. What I need to do now is work within those lines and pop some water down. Make sure you have a really clean brush because I'm literally just painting a section with water now probably hard for you to see, but I've got a bit of a pool of water. Now I'm going to get the same colour I used before, but now I'm going to dip it in and you can see that the colour is spreading. That's the great thing about watercolours and what I'm trying to show you today is that water helps to make the paints really interesting. It means that you have less control because look, they have a mind of their own but the effect at the end is really lovely and beautiful. So notice my outline here I've made a little bit darker. I've used a bit more paint because I want the outline to sort of stand out. But now I'm not even painting with 
any watercolors. I'm just painting with the water, plain water, and the colors are spreading around. It's important not to use too much water because it can pull up and really make your paint, your paper wrinkly. So you want a combination of water, bits of watercolor paint coming in there, and I'm sort of just dabbing it on so that the colors can spread really nicely. And I'm moving it down, working quickly, so that the colors don't dry out. I can always go back in. If I want an area to be even darker, I can, I can add a bit more um, paint in there. There we go. You might even choose to use a color that is a little bit different, maybe a little bit darker or even a little bit lighter to add a bit of interest so that your artwork doesn't look so flat. Anyone can do this. It is just a matter of practicing with the watercolors, keeping it within your shape and working with a fair bit of water so that the colors can spread around. a lighter colour now and see what happens. So I'm going to let those be friends join up together and blend nicely. See what happens. You can also go back in and add a bit of that lighter colour in a different section. A similar idea down the bottom here when I'm doing the watermelon rind. I want the darkest point to be on the edge here, sort of outlining my, my picture. And now I want to work with some water to help that colour to bleed out, spread into my sections here. this just up with water that's all so you can really see that the watercolor has a mind of its own it's gone into a section there I don't really want it to but that's okay I can always go back in and paint over the top If I put them side by side, I hope you can really see the difference there between using watercolours in a really flat way, literally to just colour in, and using watercolours the way they're meant to be used, and that is with water, and allowing the colours to move around and blend and play with each other. While I'm allowing my triangle picture to dry, I'm going to demonstrate a similar watercolour technique, this time using a circle for the subject. So circles are hard to draw perfectly, so it's more than fine for you to trace around something. The object that you trace around should take up the majority of your paper. We want the circle to be the main subject within our artwork today. And remember, press nice and lightly when you trace. So the important part again is to keep the watercolor within this shape. If we put any water on the outside of the shape, it will bleed out and it will have a different effect than what we want. I'm gonna start with a really nice dark blue here, just to demonstrate, but you can use whatever colors you like for this. Again, I'm just outlining the outside there. Now, if I were to wait too long, that would dry. And we don't want that because then you're going to have really distinct sections of color. We want the color to be wet. So I add a bit more water there to keep it nice and wet for us to work with. Clean it up. 
in my brush and just actually add some plain water here now. And I'm gonna let that blend together there just by touching it in and the colors will move in. If you overwork it, you go over it and over and over it, the paper will go gross and you're not gonna get that nice watery look that we're after. So try not to work with it too much. When you're looking at blending with another color, you have to consider a harmonious color. That means a color that is next to each other on the color wheel, a color that is similar. So in this example, a similar color to my blue here would be this nice turquoisey green. And I'm bringing that turquoise up and adding a bit of extra water so that they can sort of play with each other. You can even move the paper around like that to make the colors blend really nicely. And I want this edge here very perfect. So take care when doing that part. Right. I'm adding a bit of extra water up here. I don't want this part to dry out while I'm working down here. So keep that nice and watery. All right, now I'm gonna consider a harmonious color to my green here. I might add a bit of light green there. See, this is starting to dry out, so I need to add a bit more water up here. Okay, water along my edge, and now I'm going to add another harmonious colour. This time it's going to be yellow. Bring my yellow into the blue there, that'll look nice. Now notice I've used orange here and I've hardly used any water so the color isn't bleeding as strongly when I'm touching it with the with the yellow if there's not much water there there won't be a lot of um, blending going on so if you want more it's just a matter of dropping some extra water on there like that you can move the paint where you want it to go you've used too much water and you're getting a bit of a pool of water that you don't want you can always soak up some of your water and paint using a tissue or a cloth all right I'm gonna let that guy dry too before we add some details with a texture or fine liner over the top later. Once your watercolors are completely dry, you should be able to touch them and they don't feel wet at all. You can go in and add a few bits and pieces, a few details. Now, if you use a Sharpie, that's probably gonna work the best. And you can see that the black is really nice and vibrant like that there you go so simple yet so effective all you needed was some watercolors and a simple shape using water to make the colors blend and bleed now using our second shape i'm going to turn this guy into a planet now, obviously it could be anything, but that's what I'm doing today. If you wanna draw with a pencil first, of course you can, but I'm just gonna go straight ahead and freehand it. artworks made from two simple shapes, a triangle and a circle, some watercolours and a pen.
five years old, has had a go at the watermelon task. And I think she's done really well with using the water and getting the colors to blend well. So I looked at my watermelon and I loved them. I hope you love them too. I really hope you've enjoyed working with watercolours today and realised that you can start off with simple shapes and turn them into beautiful works of art. Using watercolours can be tricky because often the water has a mind of its own and it spreads out, but let's use that to our advantage and create beautiful blended colourful artworks. Please make sure that you subscribe to the Art Life YouTube channel below just for any future videos. I will be doing a lot more on watercolours in the future, so stay tuned for those ones as well. Thanks for joining me.